Hello from MOTH. I just want to talk about what the direction of this channel is going to be going forward. And as, as I hinted in the previous video, it's going to be essentially on health and diabetes management. But I would like to highlight the fact that I'm not a doctor. I'm just a working professional who has been dealing with diabetes on a long-term basis. As you may know, Diabetes is one of those diseases that can creep up on anyone and is one of those silent killers right up there with high blood pressure and things like cholesterol and you know other lifestyle diseases. So having seen the effects of diabetes firsthand or the devastation that diabetes can cause firsthand in my family, I thought this is a good direction for the channel to take because based on the statistics from the WHO, there are around 420 million people who are diabetic and, uh, and diabetes cause around 1.5 million deaths every year. And my mother, who was a diabetic, died because of the effects of diabetes. She had kidney failure, she had heart issues, she had problems with her eyes, she had both her legs amputated from below the thigh and she also suffered from a lot of uh, issues related to blood sugar control. She was on insulin for a very long time but that was not very helpful. Anyway, so Given this personal background, I've decided that this is something that I wanted to do. And if I can help someone out there, I'll be very happy. Okay, so right now the focus is going to be on the food habits, as in like what I'm going to eat on a daily basis. And personally, based on what I've seen over the past couple of years, what works best for me is a diet which is low in carbohydrates and I'll talk about some of my diet habits, some of my experiments with diet going forward, some of the things that I'm doing to ensure that I'm uh, staying healthy and getting enough nutrition. I'll also want to talk about the minimum required exercise routine going forward because that's something I've been slacking off for the past year and a half. Uh, because I've been focusing on getting my diet under control, my habits under control, food habits and other habits under control. So this is something that I wanted to talk about in the channel going forward. And of course, I am under medication. I've been under medication since I was, uh, I guess, 23 years old or 24 years old. Uh, for the first few years, I've been managing with diet and exercise, but then after I started working, I found out that uh, the food habits had changed, my sleep habits had changed. So I had to start my medication. And uh, until about two years back, I would still say that my blood sugars were really not under good control. My food habits were not under good control. I was drinking... Uh, with my friends or like having a couple of drinks at home and this sort of messed up I think my diet as well as my blood sugars. So I had reached a point back in 2022, mid 2022 where like I was like okay I think I have to start uh, insulin to get this whole thing under control because my average blood sugars were like up there around 200 whereas the normal one is supposed to be less than uh, 110 and you know just about 70 and I sort of told my doctor okay you know we've tried all sort of medication and I'll talk about that in a later video the kind of medication journey but the the whole point here is I started using Asympic back in the mid of 2022 and this has helped to sort of bring my blood sugars under control and my weight under control. I lost about 
17 kilos or i don't know how much that is close to 40 pounds i guess until uh, <clears throat> you know i reached a point where like i was looking pretty sickly so we sort of adjusted the medication and uh, my weight is now back to 69 and a half kilos i'll convert that to pound and put it up there or there uh, wherever convenient uh my cholesterol when i started was pretty bad i think it was up there around the 500 range i think it was the triglycerides or something that was around 500 and after i started as a pick and uh, because of as a pick like my hunger and uh, my craving for food had sort of reduced so that sort of helped reduce my uh, cholesterol also and the other good effect was that my blood pressure had come, started coming down and it has become normal over the past uh, i guess uh, a year or so and i just want to highlight again this is my own personal journey and what works for me might not work for you uh, because everyone is different i know people who are on isempic but uh, they had not lost as much weight as i had lost Because I went from eighty three kilos to like sixty six kilos, I, I think that is seventeen uh, kilos, I guess, and then back up to sixty nine seventy kilos. So in the end, uh, just want to highlight the fact that everyone is different. So you got to work with your doctor closely, especially if you are a diabetic or a pre diabetic, to ensure that you have a good routine. but based on the evidence that i have seen a uh, low carb diet rich in protein high in good fats seems to work for a lot of people and that seems to work for me also but over the past couple of months or i guess probably past 3 or 4 months i've not been on a strict low carb diet i would eat whatever i want to eat and that has started to show the show its effects on my average blood sugar just something that i keep track of uh, every 2 months by visiting my doctor and i've seen that it uh, it has gone from like a low 6.2 to all the way up to 7 7.0 back in the test that i did a month back so i decided that i need to refocus on you know getting back on my diet so some of the things that i'm going to do as part of uh, this journey going forward is keeping track of metrics on on the long term so one is absolutely blood sugar you know uh, on a daily basis i need to track that uh, at least on a weekly basis track my weight um every two months anyways cholesterol i i get the test done so that is something probably that i need to track but it has been under control for a long time so i'm not particularly worried about that because generally even though like i'm not following a strict diet right now i think i'm in a good state the other thing that i really wanted to focus on is blood pressure management and uh, something that has really helped me is completely stopping alcohol and that has helped to reduce my blood sugars a great deal So this is something a uh, blood sugars and blood pressure are great I'm sorry. So this is something that I need to keep uh, keep up right because when you're with your friends and there's a lot of peer pressure for you to share a drink with them and that one drink becomes two drink and you know how it goes down here. So that's something that I'm working to keep as one of those objectives as in like no alcohol consumption until i think forever right because uh, it is something that has been really helpful for my mental health as well because i find right now i'm able to deal with stress deal with uh, uh, depression and things like that in a very easy manner with very little uh, medical intervention Okay, so some of the actions going forward for this uh, channel and for myself is tracking, as I said, my 
health journey over the next few months or probably a few years down the line. Some of the actions that I'm going to stick to going forward is a 14-10 intermittent fasting routine. Uh, that is at a base minimum. That is 14 hours of fasting, 10 hours of eating window, and probably two meals a day uh, and no snacks. And I might try certain things like 16-8 fasting, which is where like you fast for 16 hours and eat only for within that eight hours window. And one of the things that I have decided is to stick to a local routine. And to begin with, I'll start off with a soft landing, wherein I eat less than 100 grams of carbs a day, which effectively works out to 400, 400 calories coming from just carbohydrates. I'll try and reduce the amount of processed food that I take because I, once in a while, I find that, you know, I'm, uh, I have this tendency to enjoy something which is out of the bag and processed, like a bag of chips or whatever. So this is something that I really want to cut because the kind of nutrition that you get from that is practically nil and the kind of fats that they use is frankly not really good for a diabetic. The other thing that I want to do, as I mentioned before, is weight tracking. And not just weight tracking in terms of weight loss or things like that, but also uh, the body fat, right, the amount and the visceral fat, which are certain things that can really affect a person who is diabetic on the long-term basis. So let me take a moment to explain this. So a visceral fat or the fat around your belly is a good indicator of how much control you have over your diabetes. So there are certain research around it and you can you are free to look at it up. Uh, but the, the crux of the matter is trying to reduce the amount of fat in your organs is a good way to control your diabetes. The other thing that I mentioned, of course, is blood sugar tracking. I've not been pretty regular about this, despite the fact that I have a, a blood sugar machine at home. Uh, this is something that I want to be a little bit more strict and a little bit more routine about, because uh, I need to understand what kind of foods I can eat without really screwing up my blood sugars and I know based on my past experience eating things like rice or bread or let's say pasta or noodles these sort of foods sort of affect my blood sugars really 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 drastically so these are some of the things I want to track and find out to understand what sort of carbs works out best for me so I just bought a bit of quinoa, uh, I guess last month, and I think that has been a little bit better compared to uh, eating rice or even you know brown rice or whatever. So I'm just gonna make sure that you know I'm going to track the blood sugars over the next few weeks to understand what are some of the best foods for me personally. And make sure that even if I'm eating carbs, I'm eating it from non-refined sources. Uh, sleep tracking. Okay, so there has been a lot of study that says like the better your sleep is, the better your blood sugar control and better your stress control, stress management. So I, I just want to ensure that, you know, I'm tracking sleep on a daily basis to understand when I'm going to sleep, when I'm getting up and sort of make a routine out of it that is uh, sustainable in the long term because we are working jobs that sometimes requires you to do overtime and sometimes requires you to work late and sometimes requires you to like eat unhealthy food and all these sort of affects your sleep pattern. I just want to ensure that I have a reasonably optimal sleep routine where I'm getting seven to eight hours of sleep. 
on a weekday and maybe sleep in on the weekend because even that is supposed to help you. There are again research around that. Uh, I'll try and put the links about some of these rich research topics that I mentioned in the description below so that you can refer uh, at your own convenience. The other thing that I wanted to do is try and get 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise. Uh, I I really like walking and this is something that I want to pick up again. So 150 minutes is really achievable in my opinion, but uh, I want to track it on a daily basis to understand, um, you know, how much I need to make up on the weekend. Because according to new research, even weekend warriors who spend like say uh, two hours or three hours working out on the weekend, that is enough to offset your sedentary habit over the week. Now, this seems to be a pretty new research. So I'm just going to try and balance it over five days or six days over the week where I try and get 20 to 30 minutes of exercise every day. So this is what I'm going to track on a weekly basis or a daily basis depending on the kind of test I'm doing and going forward I'll try and put up the statistics on a weekly basis uh, to help people understand my blood sugars and my weight going forward. The other thing that I really want to try is some of these uh, diets. I am starting tomorrow with a moderately low carb diet and trying to stick to my goal of around 1800 calories a day. I'm not too fixated about the number of calories as long as I don't go beyond 2000 calories and as long as I'm not drinking alcohol. The other thing that I'm not too fixated is the amount of protein and fats that I take on a daily basis because at least based on the empirical evidence that I have collected, eating good proteins and good fats really did not affect my blood sugars that much. Uh, so I want to try uh, initially, uh, you know, sticking to a low carb diet. I might want to transition to a Mediterranean like diet where I get 30% of the nutrition from carbs and I'll try and do my best not to eat processed carbs. 30% from good protein sources like meats and vegetables and beans and stuff like that and 40% from fat. So this is again a long term thing. Uh, I probably will have to try for a couple of weeks with this 100 grams target to see how sustainable that is and if it is sustainable for me I might not do the 30 30 40 diet that I talked about. I really want to try a keto diet uh, for a period of two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. I think two to four weeks is a good target because I want to see the effects on a relatively long term basis rather than looking at it from a one week point of view because your body needs some time to adjust to the new new diet and diet routines. And certain diets like keto diet, which changes the state of your body and the way the body processes the fuel, you need some time to ease into that routine. So I might do keto diet in the future. I want to try water fasting sometime down the line, uh, probably three days fasting or two days fasting on just water and some mineral supplements. This is something that I've done before, but I didn't do it in a sustainable way in the sense that I would fast for five days and then like break the fast with pizza and um, a bottle of wine or bread and stuff like that and that sort of was not really good for my body so I want to try it sometime down the line 
there are certain other diets like uh, one meal a day that I really want to give it a shot. I also want to try another diet that has been recommended by this doctor, uh, Jason Fung, who's a physician, I think, uh, based out of Canada, who's written this book called The Diabetes Code. I, I strongly recommend this book because it's it explains how to get into the sustainable diabetes management without medication. Uh, but the point is, uh, what I'm trying to say here is, they talk about this diet uh, where you fast for like 36 hours and when you're on fast, you drink certain things like bone soup or mineral supplement, uh, sugar-free mineral supplement, of course, and a lot of water to ensure that you stay hydrated and you don't feel tired. And you get a moderate amount of exercise, uh, but not too strenuous. A moderate amount of exercise to ensure that you're not losing muscle mass. Uh, that is something that is uh, talking about muscle mass. I lost a lot of muscle mass in the past one and a half years. I used to be more bulky, uh, but my muscle mass was pretty good. I had a pretty strong uh, back and pretty strong arms, but that is sort of uh, sort of. Uh, uh, that is sort of, uh, yeah, I mean, I've slimmed down all over and I lost a lot of muscle mass. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I'm going to try these diets and see what is sustainable for me in the long term and stick to one diet and see like how it affects my weight and weight management, my body fat, my visceral fat, uh, which I measure using a simple weighing machine that I have at home. It might not be accurate, but it's a good indicator for me to keep in mind. I'll also uh, talk about some of the nutrition that I strongly recommend to all the diabetics out there. Uh, the relationship between uh, liver and liver management, I guess, or liver health and diabetic health care. So this is something that I'm going to do on a long-term basis. And let's see how this journey goes, right? I'll try and publish a video Saturday or Sunday, depending on the progress. And I guess even without any progress, I really want to publish the video just to ensure that people can understand how to manage their diabetes. The other focus area for me, which is sort of the last point that I wanted to bring up, is to try and reduce the long-term medication that I'm taking. I'm taking medication for uh, diabetes. I think I'm taking three different medication other than uh, my Ozempic. I have medication for cholesterol. Uh, which is sort of for maintenance is what my doctor has told me, but I still like to try and uh, stop that medication if possible. Uh, a few couple of years back, my blood pressure was pretty high. So I've been prescribed medication for that. And I want to try and stop that medication if it is possible, because right now it's under control. And the doctor last time a month back, had reduced the medication to half of what I was taking past uh, a year or so. So this is another long-term goal for me. And I want to, of course, keep you all updated. So thank you for watching. And I hope to catch up with you the next week for a new video about my diabetes management. Thank you everyone for watching. So that's it. I'll catch up with you the next week and update you on what has been going on and let you know how I'm tracking my metrics and some of the key things that I'm tracking. I'll see you on next Saturday or Sunday. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and I hope 
this video can be helpful for you in the future. Thank you.